five-time Emmy Award-winning investigative journalism uh, journalist, and he uh, was recently doing an investigation into uh, foreign interference in our election, and he's here to share our, 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 his results, and that's very important because it's, it's definitely an issue that's right out there in the news today. So uh, without further ado, John Mattis. Thank you all, everyone. As you're all aware, we're in a crisis. That crisis is an assault on our democracy. No ifs, ands, or buts. We were assaulted. And I want to put this in the context of our political environment in Washington. We have a party in Washington that wants to deny that we were attacked deny that we were infiltrated, and deny the attack had an impact. That attack was a sabotage of our election. Six months ago, I began an investigation. I was one of the organizers of the Sanders campaign here in Southern California, and I started seeing some very strange things. And that began my investigation. But I want to take you back to what we know because I'm going to talk about evidence tonight, provable evidence of what happened to our democracy and what happened to our election. Let me put up the first slide. Yeah, trying to get that up. That's Working. okay. Stretch it out. What happened, and what I'm going to be referring to, is a CIA report that came out that categorically said, you heard the word hack. But you didn't really hear the word infiltration. The hack is just a mechanical thing. But this is what really happened. The Russian government targeted a person in our campaign named Hillary Clinton. They sought, through use of social trolls, to weaponize information and to denigrate her to tilt the election. That is a finding of 17 of our intelligence agencies here in our country. Now the question is, and you look at that and you go, what does that mean? How did they do it? And I began to ask myself that same question back in July. And I said to, I said to myself, what would be the perfect weapon to attack our democracy to get to the voters that you want to peel away from the coalition that could have won our election. That was a Democratic coalition. Simple politics 101. After a primary, you get together, you have a coalition, and your numbers are there to win. Now, if you're an outside source and you want to peel away, you look for 13 million Bernie Sanders voters. What's the vehicle to use to find him? What's the weapon to use? If we could go to the next slide. It's the perfect weapon. It is an open platform for anyone to join, however many personalities you have. And in the Bernie Sanders campaign, we were an open community. We had 150 Facebook pages around the country, all of them with Bernie Sanders voters. You didn't have to buy a voter list. All you had to do to go to attack our democracy, go to Facebook, plug in the word Bernie Sanders, and find 13 million voters to infiltrate and sabotage. And that's exactly what they did. Now let's look at the next slide and the timeline. This is the timeline that the CIA tells us was when the Russians started. In March, they started. They created the cyber war. They weaponized. They went about the hacking to go into the DNC. But more importantly, they set about infiltration. And how they did that, let me go to the next slide and show you. Out of the blue, in Eastern Europe, in Macedonia and Albania, American-looking websites get created, up and running, fully running, beautiful English, slick presentations with storylines in them. And you say, what are people in Macedonia and Albania doing, creating websites, 
And is it a mere coincidence that they come three weeks after the order comes from the Kremlin that we are going to attack America? Those are the attackers. Those are the people that came into our country. And the question is, how did they do it? And what was the process? Well, if we can go to the next slide, jump forward to August. Here are the notes of a former spy from MI6 who reported in a private dossier in August that he was hearing Russians boasting, boasting, mind you, that they were going to peel away the Bernie Sanders voters, get them not to vote for Hillary, and they could win the election for their candidate. Now, this was written before anybody had talked about infiltration. This is a private memorandum. But this gentleman heard the Russians boasting, boasting that they had not only hacked the DNC, but they were starting a massive propaganda disinformation campaign, the same campaigns they waged in Ukraine, Sweden, and all over Eastern Europe. That campaign is the one that I stumbled into in August of 2016. If we could go to the next slide, I discovered a man named Oliver Mitoff. He was here in San Diego on a Bernie Sanders Facebook page. And I said, well, that's a strange name. Who is he? And I looked at his posts, and his posts were rather strange. Hillary Clinton behind, leaving people behind in Benghazi. It got stranger, and I said, who is this man? And as an investigator, I looked. And I saw I peeled up and peeled away the layers on him. And I found, if you go to the next slide, he wasn't one person. He was four. There were four Oliver Mitos floating in, the, in cyberspace on Facebook and the most unique thing about these four people, all the same person, mind you, they belong to only Bernie Sanders Facebook pages. 36 of them around the country. 36 pages that this man was a friend of. This man was engaged in putting on posts. Posts that were, Hillary left people behind in Benghazi. Hillary had a body double. Hillary was dead. You name it, he wrote it. Now if we could go to the next slide, and what was so unique about him is he was posting in dozens of clubs simultaneously. And this is where the Russian technology comes in, because they created a weapon, they bragged about it last year, that they had technology that they could simultaneously hit as many places, as many sites as they wanted to anywhere in the world. So this gentleman, this ghost from Macedonia, who happened to own his own website, was posting simultaneously the exact same post down to the mispronunciations and the, and the bad punctuations. Identical posts in 30 Facebook pages, all devoted to Bernie Sanders, all disparaging Hillary Clinton. All of them, one after another, after another, after another. <coughs> So when I saw that this was not just one man, but four people, all of them ghosts, I said to myself, well, is there more out there? And when I said, are there more out there, I started asking people, and I started complaining. And I went to a high-level person in the State Department, and I said, I think there's foreign interference in our election. And in October, they said to me, yes. Russia is inside our electoral process, and we don't know how to stop it. That was the State Department. And that I said, well, and the words were, Putin's paying for it. So afterwards, I reached out, and I started talking to other people in other Facebook pages, and I found that they had had the same problems with these plants all over the country, Latinos for Bernie Sanders, Pennsylvanians for Bernie Sanders, Oregon for Bernie Sanders. People were complaining, but because the Bernie Sanders operation in the fall was done, we didn't have anywhere place to complain. We didn't have a vehicle to shut it down. We were grassroots all over the country, and we were being victimized in mass by this infiltration. 
we can go to the next slide, what we collectively came up with is over a hundred sites, a vast number of them in Eastern Europe, Macedonia, Albania, some people owning four or five, six of these sites, all hidden behind Panamanian registries, but ultimately going back to Eastern Europe, all orchestrating the same anti-Hillary venom that the MI6 spy had told us was going to happen. And here it came. It filled the Bernie Sanders environment, the Bernie Sanders Facebook pages, and we saw a rapid. If you were a Bernie Sanders supporter and you talked to your friends, were they interested in Hillary Clinton? And if you were a Clinton supporter and you talked to someone in a Bernie Sanders group, you faced hostility, you faced these wild stories of her body double. Now, admittedly, Hillary Clinton was not the perfect candidate. The DNC did not do Bernie Sanders any favors. But what the Russians were doing was poisoning the well. They were, they were taking a sentiment in the Bernie Sanders campaign and doing exactly what they boasted they would do. They were going to peel away, <coughs> discourage voters, or better yet, get them to vote for a third party. Or even better, appeal to their nature, have them write in Bernie Sanders. A perfect way to win for their candidate. And that's exactly what they did. Now let me go to the next slide and show you how big was the impact. How big was the infiltration campaign? Remember, Democrats don't want to admit that it happened at all. Look at those numbers. Eight million shares of disinformation, propaganda, the majority of it <coughs> written, formulated, and put out by the Kremlin because Putin hated Hillary. Only 7 million shares on Facebook of conventional news. Of course it had an impact. And the impact was Bernie Sanders voters went to the third party, they sat at home, or they wrote in Bernie Sanders. Now let's look at the outcome. We know who won. Russia won. 8% of a younger demographic voted for a third party candidate. In Wisconsin, 144,000 for third party candidates. Hillary lost by 44. That was repeated state after state after state. This Russian campaign was not just in one state, it was nationwide. So the question is, are we going to acknowledge it? Are we going to investigate it? And I say if we don't, we're talking about a campaign that has not ended. The Russians are still here. They're still, we could go to the next slide, perhaps the most outrageous example. Right there, tonight, go home, pull up Bernie Sanders for President 2020. It used to be written Bernie Sanders lovers. It was a crude, probably <coughs> got their terminology wrong. 60,000 active members. Every single post in the fall on that Facebook page was written in Albania <laughs> or the Kremlin. Every single post followed by 60,000 good-natured Bernie supporters. Now, I outed this in Huffington Post. Rachel Maddow outed it, and if you go there tonight, there are going to be a huge number of people denying that the post <coughs> sat there and poisoned the well all fall on a very legitimate looking page were a hundred percent generated by the Kremlin. Now to think about that, how bad were we played? How well were we duped? Just go to the page and see the people that want to deny that it happened. Think about the people that want to deny what Rachel Maddow broadcast the other night. 
There are certain people that have fell victim to this, and it's very sad. They don't want to admit. We collectively, Bernie Sanders, our organization, all of us, we don't want to admit it. We were played. I don't know what to say other than that the Bernie Sanders grassroots organizers from around the country all did the best they could to fight this when they saw it in real time, to block it in real time, but they were more powerful than us, better organized than us, and certainly the Kremlin better funded than us. But right now, they've gotten away with it. Right now, they are still running this Facebook page right out of Albania. I've been working with Albanian investigative journalists and trying to get this person who runs this page, who claims to be a legitimate news site, who claims that he, in fact, supports Bernie Sanders. He claims to be headquartered in Burlington, but he's really in Albania. And then ask yourself, how could an Albanian who barely speaks English and can't write an English sentence create not only a Facebook page, but he run four websites in perfect English bombarding us with anti-Hillary material all fall. I say it's time for us to push back, demand a clean investigation, not tainted. And we have that power because we have the proof. We have the proof in any Bernie Sanders Facebook page. You can go and see the wild posts. And you look at the names, you look at the websites, and you'll see they track back to Eastern Europe. This is a campaign of subversion of American democracy. This is a campaign that succeeded. Republicans don't want to talk about the infiltration. There it is. The Republicans don't want to talk about the impact. We know it. We can see it. And the people still inside the Bernie Sanders groups that want to not admit that it happened, not admit that there were Russian trolls and bots sitting on our Facebook pages. The impact was real. And it's up to us to demand collectively around the country that our representatives put down the partisanship, demand that a special prosecutor be brought in. The Republicans are hiding. My investigation continues. We can push back. We will push back. It's too important now.